Hello and welcome to this lesson for a Dire Straits classic. Here's Sultans of Swing. Let's start from the top. There's a pickup on the snare drum on beat four, and then we are straight into the beat. I'll go straight into the next four bars of this intro, and then I'll put the whole eight bars back together. Now the whole intro, slowly, and then up to speed. That takes us into the first verse, and these next four bars of drums are probably the most important in the whole song, just because they get repeated every single time there's a verse, and they don't change at all. So once you've got these nailed, you can play them right throughout the entire song. You might have noticed I am cheating a little bit. I can hear ride cymbals instead of crash cymbals at the start of each bar. So I've actually set up a second ride cymbal over here just to get that sound a little more easily. If you don't have a second ride cymbal, just hit your crash cymbal or move over and hit your ride cymbal instead. Those four bars get repeated, just like I said, every time there's a verse. And then the second part of the verse has a ride cymbal pattern that's a little bit offbeat and a little bit off kilter. I'll play it for you slowly and see if you can grab it. I think after a little bit of practice, that ride cymbal pattern will take care of itself and you'll start playing your own version of either offbeat ride cymbal or filling in those three eighth notes and just leaving off that first one. I think eventually you'll just kind of get a vibe for it and then you'll be able to jam it out and play your own version. There's a couple more bars of this before we go back around through the verse again. There's one more little tag back over on the hi-hats, just four bars long before we go back and start the verse again. If you lock in those drum grooves, you've probably got about 80% of the song covered, just because this section repeats over and over again throughout the song. Next up, I'm going to look at a fill that comes in the second verse, right at the end before we move on to the ride cymbal. It's pretty straightforward, it goes like this. <laughs> 
from there it's back over to the ride symbol and then we have the tag after the ride symbol part again but every second time it is a little bit longer and this is how the first one goes After that longer tag section, we have finally made it up to the chorus. This is how it goes. follows very closely with the guitar so I'm sure you can already hear it in the drum part a little bit. I'll play it up to speed and see if you can kind of sing along. From here this lesson is going to get pretty choppy because we've got that verse section that we repeat back to every single time and I'm just going to start looking at some of the fills and things that I think are a little bit interesting in the song. So first up here's a little tiny fill halfway through the next lot of verses. Next up here's the shorter tag the first time around these verses. After that build up at the end of the tag, it's back into the verse again and halfway through there's another fill. And then after the offbeat ride symbol pattern, there's a longer tag section to round out this whole verse. From there it is into the chorus again. After the chorus we're going to go right back through to the verse section and here's the fill halfway through that first verse. Most of that verse is pretty similar to what we've already done so next up I'll look at the longer tag section at the end of this whole verse section. Moving on we are into the first guitar solo and this just follows that same verse pattern again so here's one fill from the first half of the verse. In the guitar solo when we move over to the ride cymbal there's a few extra 16th notes in there and that's going to be a little bit of a workout for your fingers. Check it out slowly.
and then here's the longer tag after that ride cymbal part. After that tag, we go into a chorus section once again. Then we go into yet another verse, and in this verse is that great drum part that sounds pretty much like a paradiddle split between the ride cymbal and the snare drum. Here's what I worked out when I listened closely. If you just wanted to play a paradiddle right through that bar, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, that would still sound fantastic. Next up is another one of those long tags. Here's how it goes. That of course takes us into the chorus again. At the end of this chorus there is a different fill right at the end and then we're going to go into the final guitar solo. I'll play this fill first. Now we are up to the very last guitar solo and this is the outro for the entire song. The drums are doing some pretty strange things. There's crash cymbals without kick drums underneath them and there's kick drums underneath snare drums and crash cymbals. It feels a little bit funny to play to me so if you wanted to work out an easier version that would be fine but this is what I can hear so I'll take it slowly and see if you like it. There's four more bars of that in a similar style. From that build up, it's over onto the ride cymbal for another bit of a workout because there's some 16th notes in there once again and it's going to follow along quite closely with the guitar solo so it sounds really great if you can lock it in. Here's the next four bars and then I'll put it all together. Here's those eight bars all back together. And then as the song fades out, we go back to a similar beat to the beginning of this guitar solo.
The song fades out from there, and that is the end of Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. There's plenty in there, but as I said at the beginning, if you can just grab those first couple of sections, you'll be able to play most of the song, no worries at all. Have fun practicing that one, and I'll see you at the next lesson.